the past few decades, the energy drink market has exploded. In 2018, it's reported to be worth about $53 billion and is projected to reach $86 billion by 2026. Before Rockstar Energy, Monster, and Red Bull, there was Jolt Cola. With advertising slogans like all the sugar and twice the caffeine, it's been described as the original American energy drink. So whatever happened to Jolt Cola and why don't we see it on store shelves today? Find out on this episode of Business Tales. It was the 1980s and the cola wars were in full effect. Diet sodas were becoming increasingly more popular as many began realizing that regular Coca-Cola and Pepsi, as tasty as they were, also came along with a very high sugar content. This led many older Americans to begin drinking low-calorie diet sodas made with artificial sweeteners in place of sugar. This new craze even helped lead Coke to change the recipe of its flagship beverage, including parts of its Diet Coke recipe in the rebranded New Coke. New Coke failed miserably, but that's another story for another time. With Coke and Pepsi busy battling it out on the main stage, enjoying massive success with low sugar and even caffeine free products, a newcomer known as Jolt Cola entered the soda marketplace. But this beverage didn't follow the popular low sugar trend of the time. Creator and CEO of the Jolt Company Incorporated, CJ Rapp, had something very different in mind. A highly caffeinated sugary soda that would appeal to a younger demographic, the college student. It's no secret that many college age students are less health conscious than their older counterparts, or at least they were at the time. Need to stay up late and cram for an exam? Grab a jolt. It made perfect sense, and in 1985, after six years of development, Jolt was officially created. By late 1986, a one million dollar advertising campaign went live, which was a decent amount of money to spend at the time. It included TV commercials, print ads, and even a promotion with Bloomingdale's. The ads were meant to be provocative and in your face, with the idea being to go against the safe, squeaky clean campaigns of Coke and Pepsi. The objective was to let everyone know exactly what Jolt was, a soda with all the sugar and twice the caffeine. Each can of Jolt contained 72 milligrams of caffeine, which was the maximum amount allowed by the United States Food and Drug Administration. This didn't sit well with many health experts at the time, despite the fact that the caffeine content paled in comparison to an average eight ounce cup of coffee. And when compared to some of today's energy drinks, it seems laughable. For example, a can of C4 Ultimate Energy contains 300 milligrams in just 16 ounces, and a five hour energy extra strength has 230 milligrams of caffeine in just 1.93 ounces. That's 119 milligrams per fluid ounce. But energy drinks weren't a thing in the 1980s, and when compared to a quote unquote normal soda, it seemed to be excessive for some. But despite concerns from health experts, Jolt received some major publicity and was even mentioned on Late Night with David Letterman and Good Morning America. With a goal of obtaining 2-4% to of the American soft drink market share, Jolt was off and running and quickly became available in 40 different states as well as in Canada. It became a hit with the younger demographic the company had aimed for and even began appearing in bars. In 1987, a 25 calorie version aptly named Jolt 25 was introduced and was sweetened with aspartame. Many new flavors were later released, including Cherry Bomb, Orange Blast, White Lightning, Citrus Climax, Electric Blue, and Red Eye. Despite receiving some big name press and the company's attempt to diversify its product line, Jolt just never quite achieved more than a cult status in the world of soft drinks and would remain in its small niche in the marketplace throughout the 1990s, occasionally making its way into pop culture. For those late night hacks, Jolt Cola. The soft drink of the elite hacker. Who are these guys? In 2003, the name was licensed to company Gum Runners to create a new line of caffeinated gum with the slogan, Chew More, Do More. Jolt Energy Gum was available in both Spearmint and Icy Mint. 
In 2006, Jolt Cola jumped on the official energy drink train and changed its product line into Jolt Energy, introducing new cans in the shape of batteries that made a popping noise when opened. A new revamped line of flavors included cola, blue raspberry, lemon lime, cherry bomb, passion fruit, orange blast, wild grape, and even a new diet version called Ultra. A smaller 8.5 ounce can called Quick Fix also hit the market and became available in bars to be used as a mixer. By 2008, creator CJ Rapp decided to sell his controlling interest in the Jolt Company to Emigrant Capital, who removed Rapp as CEO. Fast forward just one whole year and in 2009, Emigrant filed for bankruptcy. Rapp, along with a group of shareholders, were able to have the bankruptcy filings dismissed. Rapp and another shareholder then proceeded to file suit against Emigrant Capital, citing a breach of fiduciary responsibility. And after nearly a decade of litigation, an undisclosed settlement was finally reached between the two parties. But that wasn't quite the end of Jolt Cola. More recently, Jolt made a return to the shelves of Dollar General in 2017. But in 2019, Jolt's online presence disappeared entirely, and Dollar General soon after stopped selling Jolt products. As of now, no official word has been given on whether or not we can expect a triumphant return of Jolt Cola or Jolt Energy. However, websites still exist for both Jolt Cola and Jolt Energy Gum. So maybe there's hope. If you enjoyed this episode of Business Tales, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.